What's up, everybody? Something that a few people have suggested is uh, since all these changes have been made to this car since I bought it, people want to get a build list of what's been done to this car. This is my 1989 Ford Probe GT Turbo. Pulled it out of a field, got it for free in Clarkston, Washington. Um, brought it back to Spokane. Had an 88 Thunderbird Turbo Coupe at the time. And with an intake exhaust and a boost controller and a chip DCU, this car would keep up with my T-Bird, which had over 350 wheel horsepower because it was so heavy. And I just decided to build this car, which was the dumbest thing that I've ever done in the history of dumb shit that people have done. This car has been a nightmare. I've been through seven engines. I've been through five transaxles, about six sets of axles, ten sets of brake pads, five or six sets of rotors. It's just, I'm pushing this chassis way beyond what it's meant to be pushed. But I figured I would... Uh, give you all the chance to actually hear about what's all been done to this car and what the future plans are with it. So I'm going to show you. Starting inside of the car, which don't mind the fact that it's extremely dirty. I need to vacuum it out and do a bunch of other stuff, but this car has a Bosch voltage gauge, an AEM Yugo wideband, and an autometer 30 PSI boost gauge. Had 185,000 on it when the speedometer stopped working, and I used to have a GPS heads-up display speedometer, but I need to put another cigarette lighter in before I can do that. Yes, I know the car is nasty. Don't care. Car is gutted except for the seats. The stereo's been deleted. Um... I was super lazy about hiding the wiring, so I didn't. <laughs> I just put a loom around it and called it good. Um, I put red interior in it when it was originally gray, as you can see with the dash. But it was in way nicer condition, so I threw it in. It's still got door panels and trim panels as well. And the back seats, but everything else is gutted in the car. Um, it's back to a stock shifter. It was a Honda Civic short throw. And I got rid of that. The car is running on a Mega Squirt 2 version 3.57 standalone ECU with all the goodies except for sequential fuel injection and coil on plug. Um, we decided to use a factory ignition system for now. And I'm going to see what the limit of that is. But now we'll take you to where the real things happen with this car, which will be the engine bay. So for years, this car was a non-turbo short block. Um, I, I mean, I went through six sets of cast pistons before this last engine is the first engine since the original engine where I had Hyper Eutectic 7.8 to 1 turbo pistons. But to go over what's been done to this car, it's got a standalone engine management unit, a Mega Squirt 2 version 3.57, which allows me to run different fueling. Still running the factory ignition system, NGK plug wires, uh, Bosch cap and rotor, and then a brand new ignition control module or igniter and coil, upgraded 300ZX fuel filter with higher flow and capacity, and Mazda RX-7 545cc purple top high impedance injectors, fuel lab adjustable fuel pressure regulator, it's got a Walbro 255 in the gas tank, I gotta put my other valve cover on so I can run uh, my lines to my catch can. This car also has a gigantic three inch core, three inch in and out uh, front mount intercooler, which as you can see is the entirety of the front cross section of this car. It's got an upgraded Nissan 240SX dual core aluminum radiator with dual eBay fans, although only one works because I melted the wiring off of that one when the mounts broke and it hit the turbo, which is right there. Um, and one is plenty sufficient with this radiator. It doesn't get hot at all. It's got a factory GT uh, Mazda H-Series transaxle case with... Um, a 1991 Probe LX Vulcan V6 Mazda H-Series gear set and final drive. 
So it is a whole lot longer gears, which allows this car to stay in the really narrow power band. Then it has got a good area under curve, but peak torque and peak horsepower are pretty close together. So I like to keep it in that meat and potatoes of the power band, and this tranny helps a lot with that. It's got an M Factory helical LSD and billet aluminum shift forks. And then uh, I set the preloads tighter and added a couple of shims to the bearing races to keep the shafts from flexing as much because shaft flex is a big problem with these cars. All the turbo lines have been upgraded to AN fittings, the drain and feed. Um, I upgraded all the fuel lines to AN fittings, which I just got right into the end of the rail there with an adapter. Um, I've got a silicone uh, upper radiator hose. I've got AWR polyurethane uh, 98 durometer engine mounts, three inch intake. It's got a two and a half inch to three inch bumper exit exhaust. Um, and uh, basically that's about it, man. Uh, did 218 wheel horsepower, 299 foot pounds on stock turbo and intercooler 13 pounds, which was the record. And then I upgraded to a little bit smaller intercooler than this and the same turbo and at 16 pounds untuned on pump gas with just a probinator chip DCU with the fueling mods I have now, stock 330cc injectors and 55 pounds of base fuel pressure. Uh, I got 267 wheel horsepower and 270, or excuse me, 261 wheel horsepower and 271 foot pounds of torque at the wheels, which was the stock injector no fifth injector, no nitrous, no methanol, no added fuel, basically um, record for a um, GD chassis Mazda on a probinator ECU. And then right now it's at the same boost. It's on pump gas, 16 pounds, tuned on the 550cc injectors with minimal timing. And this Saturday it goes back on the dyno. Car runs excellent. It's ready to go. It's got a Gretty Type RS clone. A lot of you might have noticed it does not have a map or a MAF sensor or a vein airflow meter, and that's because it's got an internal Map Daddy 4 bar map sensor in the Mega Squirt. And then I run a GM open air intake air temperature sensor, which I welded into the intake pipe right there. Um, and then Currently, on these injectors, I'm going to try for around 30 pounds of boost on race gas, which will be really overdoing these injectors. And uh, at probably 95, 90, 95% duty cycle, I'm hoping to get 325-ish wheel horsepower, maybe 350 foot-pounds. And then I'll upgrade the injectors, and I will throw on this turbo that I'm about to show you. So this is a stock um mazda f2t ihi rhb5 vj11 turbo 38 millimeter very small turbo and the one that's going to be going on it hallset hx35 w8 blade which is a 56 millimeter turbo so for a size comparison obviously a large upgrade from the stock turbo and my to4b there's the wastegate springs I will be adding if I need to to hit my target boost. The car can currently has NGK V power 7 heat range plugs in it. And uh, yeah, this thing is going to be a ripper. So stay tuned, subscribe. This Saturday, you're going to see some dyno videos. Whether it makes power, it blows up. Either way, you're going to see the video. And uh, make sure you share, man. Help me get some more subscribers, get some more views and uh, motivate me to take this to the next level.